All right, so uh, I want to bring on Ben Leg and Greg Phillips. These guys are uh, these guys are doing a business that I really love, and uh, they are seasoned guys at it. Welcome, guys. Hey, Eddie. How you doing? Hey, Eddie. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, as you guys know, I in the note buying space, I've made literally thousands of field trips to guys that were selling land around the country and owner financing it. And um, I'm a I'm a country boy by nature, and so I like land. Um, I've bought land notes, and I don't know a lot of different places. I think I've probably closed well over 500 portfolios of land notes. So I made a lot of field trips, and when I met you guys, it was very exciting for me because you guys were living what I thought was a possibility that a lot of people just did not know. And first, first of all, you live where you want to live. And it has nothing to do where you can do your land business. Yep, and, that's correct. And you do so. You do it significantly virtually. And then, secondly, the thing I'm really impressed about your business is, is that you guys don't even live in the same market, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, we're we're Virginia boys. That's where we met. Um, and and we both have moved uh, probably seven or eight years ago. I moved to uh, South Louisiana, and Greg moved to. To Charleston, but you know, got our business started there, and and really have team members there still uh, on the ground. But um, you know, we were able to to move and, and live where we want. So the case study we're going to do today, I would consider to be not ordinary but extraordinary, right? It's a good deal. This one's not the not the norm. Um, you know, we definitely find some good deals, and that's really what we're good at um, the acquisition side. Uh, but this one is, uh, it's a good one. It, it definitely is a good one. And it shows you what's possible. And um, I believe that, uh, you know, th this is what I call a country land deal, right? You're not really a subdivider. You are, you may be a, a land uh, split up guy. You may take a track of land and split it into more than one track. Right. But you're not really, you're not putting in utilities and you're not putting in necessarily, you may put a driveway in, but not necessarily a road, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah, we've done a number of subdivides or divisions. Um, yeah. But yeah, as far as the infrastructure, I mean, Greg and I have talked about that a lot. Um, we, that's just not something we've we've done. Yeah. Or I don't think we even want to do, to be honest. Right. With you. We, like, we like to keep it easy and, and basically get it lined up, ready for the buyer to go or whatever. Yeah. So, so I really appreciate these guys. I think they have a very good model. They're, they're, they're quite giants in the business. In fact, uh, in the business that I'm involved in, our land business, we have a little network of guys that are from the different parts of the country that do this well and all have a, you know, a good contribution to it. And so I'm honored to say that that these guys teach me the, the parts of the land business that they're really good at, that we can be better at and hopefully vice versa. So it's a, it's a good partnership and stuff. I want to show you guys a case study today. And uh, Greg, that's some of your handiwork, isn't it? The, is this the, uh, the, uh, that is not mine. One day, hopefully I'll get on that thing and do it. But, um. but uh, we got <laughs> They you yeah. did it all with the skid steer, right? The little mowing thing in front of the skid steer. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. We had a uh, actually buddy of mine who I grew up with. Um, we hired him to get out there with his skid steer. So this tract was, um, if you'd seen the before pictures, you know this is after, but before was imagine a jungle, literally. <laughs> you couldn't see. You couldn't see into that tract. It was just uh, you know. Uh, old growth, regrowth, um, and we, we ended up buying that, and it we knew it was something that uh, we could add value to, and that's really what we look for, among other things, when we're buying land. But you know, it's amazing what a skid steer can do. A day, day and a half work of skid steer work, and and a load, couple loads of gravel. No, no doubt about it. As you know, I'm a fan of that, and uh, we like do that on some of the land that we do as well. So. So this was over in, out in the country. This was 33 acres. And uh, this was, I guess this is your before picture. So it gives you a pretty good sense of what it can look like before and after, right? That's right. Yep. This one, um, 
you know, is, is one that we, um, after we got the skid steer in there, obviously, you know, we're able to cut down a lot of that and, and get it cleaned up. Um, you know, and this is one that, you know, it's, it's just in a really good area. Um, you know, Greg and I both grew up, you know, not far from here. Um, and, you know, when we saw this particular tract of land, uh, we knew the area and where it was, um, power at the road, uh, what else, Greg, good state road frontage, um, you know, this is one where, you know, all the all the checks were kind of, you know, checked off on this one. That's great. What I would say that you guys do is you essentially buy land like house buyers buy houses. Right. You yep. use, use all the same techniques. You find people mm -hmm. that have a piece of property they're not using and you you do a, a, a marketing system to go reach out to them. So here's the land track and um, and, and I assume that you all got you guys can see that. And, uh, you know, the orange line here is, of course, the property itself where you where you bought it. So it opens up in the back. Right. It's kind of a weird shaped track. Yep. Got a little uh, pipe stem. Go ahead, Greg. Got a little pipe stem right there. Yeah. Yeah. And this is this is off the GIS as well. So folks aren't used to looking at maps or, or land. This is on the county GIS. It'll map out all the properties. And yeah. We, I think one of the, the, the oh, sorry, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, no, we, we, we've seen enough of them. This looks normal to us. Yeah. Right. Well, and it kind of looks normal to me because as you guys know, I look at a lot of stuff like this as well. But basically the 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 the, the, the line here, of course, is the county road, right? And this right. track probably did not make a lot of sense to bust up into various tracks because of the way the shape of it, right? Yeah, and this one wouldn't have been, you know, you'd have to have a significant amount more of road frontage to be able to do that. You know, if it had that, we, it would have made great sense. Uh, but this one, there was some, there was, is actually in land use, so we would have had to pull it out of the land use. Uh, there were some different things with this that wouldn't have made sense to do that. Uh, but this one on Route 15, it's a major um, route in Virginia up to Interstate 64. And this property is right by Fork Union Military Academy. So if you've uh, Googled that, it's a it's a very uh, prestigious school. Uh, That's great. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about it. So you so you you guys bought the property, and and just kind of briefly tell us a little bit about the story. So you bought it all cash. Tell us about the seller a little bit and what their story was. <laughs> um, I mainly dealt with the seller. I I actually. Um, I received an email after we we sent him an offer. So Greg, uh, I'll let him kind of describe you know our, our marketing process briefly, and then I'll kind of take it once we once he received the offer. Yeah. So basically, we'll we'll get a list and filter it down for all the land that we're interested in. We'll go ahead and send out direct mail or whatever contact we want to to sellers. If they're interested in selling, reach out to us. We'd be glad to talk with you, get an offer out to you and make a deal work. So this is just one that came through the pipeline for us and then then took it from there. Yeah, I just, I, it struck me because I got an email and it was a very different email. It was from an attorney um, and it, it was, there was nothing in the body of the email. It just had an attachment with a formal letter on company letterhead for his law firm. And he'd said, thank you for the offer. Could you please call me to walk me through the process and, and how you arrived at, at your offer price? And it was signed by the attorney. I just it just struck me as odd. So I just I personally just picked up the phone and called the gentleman. And that was how he communicated to us, which I'd never really seen before, to be honest with you. Yeah. And we ended up buying this um, property from an attorney out of Richmond, Virginia. Um, very, very nice guy in his you know late 60s, probably early 70s. He had inherited this pr property he had inherited some other properties on this road and he was just selling. Um, so I, I talked with him, built some rapport and, and ended up being able to close the deal. It's the story we've all seen a million times, right? He had inherited it. He yep. probably called two or three realtors to list it. They may have listed it. They didn't know how to market it and they probably never got an offer. And to him, it was sort of like unsaleable land, so to speak, right? Yeah, I think and the other big factor for him was he did cut the timber. So he received some of his equity out of the land, which is yeah. a big point for us. And 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 it caused, you know, that there would need to be some work, some cleanup on the property. Um, so that was something that we kind of talked through uh, yeah. that he he finally just kind of agreed. 
So in your neck of the woods, there is a timber value on a lot of this kind of property. Oh and, yeah. And I grew up and I did a lot of deals in the Southeast. So I'm very familiar with that idea. Great idea that he did. Yep. So he had gotten a lot of money out of it. And this was just kind of the salvage value of the land left in his mind. Right. Right. And this is why, this is why entrepreneurs, uh, make money. Entrepreneurs solve problems. He couldn't sell it. Guarantee you he couldn't have listed it with a realtor and gotten any offers, right? Unless he sold it to an adjoining property owner. He would have had to clean it up for sure. Yeah. There's no doubt. You guys go out and, and get it slicked up a little bit. Don't put a lot of money into it. Just put it, put an entrance in the front, right? Correct. Got it. Got an entrance all the way to where you can get back to where you can actually see where you can get the the wife you know in the truck and get her out there so she can actually see the track that's the idea got it got got a park in the front door right right all right so then you guys reposition it and we have this conversation in our group a lot you know like my dad used to say i grew up in, around horses right my dad used to say a horse is worth what the traffic will bear <laughs> right yeah and meaning a horse is worth what somebody will pay for it. And I think positioning it to the right market in the right way has a lot to do with somebody doing it. So you guys resell this land for 130,000 bucks. Yeah. I'll let Greg kind of tell you one of our marketing secrets, what we do right away. Yeah. So one of the, one of the secrets is, uh, as you had mentioned, Eddie is, is get in touch with the neighbors. So we, we go ahead and send a, a letter to all the adjoining neighbors and they're the first people we want to contact. They, they know the land the best. And we also want to do the right thing if it's in their backyard and they want it. We, we want to work with them. So did that work? It did. We ended up uh, selling it. We sent you know, neighbor letters, what we call our neighbor letters. It's just a process of funnel through our, our marketing process. And one of the first things is just our quote unquote neighbor letter. Um, very simple, very plain Jane, just, Hey, we've got this track. We thought it's the right thing to send you a letter before we market it. Give us a call. And, and that's what, what we did. All right. Now here's the best part about this deal. Okay. You get, you get 30,000 down, Hmm. 30,000 <laughs> paid for it. 30,000 down. <laughs> yep. And you end up with a seller finance note. Well, let's just call it free. Correct. Right. It's profit. Pretty, pretty close. And uh, you get almost a thousand bucks a month for 20 years. Tell me it ain't so. Yeah, this one's a good one. This one was, um, you know, and the neighbor, you know, we've learned a lot just in no school and obviously meeting you, Eddie. So one of the biggest things we focused on is getting more down. Um, and understanding and, and underwriting our buyers a little bit better, our borrowers rather, a little bit better. Um, this gentleman, it's, it's pride of ownership and it's, it's sacred to him. I mean, this is, this is a guy who has high character. We try to underwrite character now and pride of ownership. And this guy has all of it along with 30,000 bucks. You know, he ain't going to walk away from it. You know, this is something he described. He called right away off the neighbor letter said, this is for my son who just graduated from BMI. This is for my family. This is what I'm going to pass down through our generations. We're going to keep this tract. We're going to clean it up. Horses are going to go back here. This is for our family. And that's, you know, there's, that's who you want. I've been involved in selling lots of land, right? And I have learned that land has to have a sacred value to the buyer. And if it does, there's virtually no chance they'll ever default. Correct. We had, a, you know, speaking of that, uh, Greg and I've talked about this a lot, but we had a buyer call, call, and I talked with him personally probably about a year ago. And I said, well, why are you buying this? Or what, you know, what was, what I tried to get, get some interest. And he said something interesting to me. He said, this is my going to be my future. And I thought that was an interesting comment because how do you ever default on your future? You know, so it's just, it was one thing that's kind of stuck with me. Um, and Greg and I talk about that a lot. Yeah, there's uh you and I've had, we've had lots of conversations, the three of us about different land and what land means and why somebody would buy it and what they would do with it. And as you guys know, I'm not a giant fan of some of the 
you know, infield lots kind of stuff, you know, that's land that really they have no, there's nothing they could ever do with it. Right? right. And this is land that they can put their future on. And I feel good for them. Price is irrelevant. They, they are, they're, they're selling a piece of property because that's what you offered it for. And the truth of the matter is if they wouldn't have paid that, you probably could have found somebody else that would have paid the price. Right? Yes. So it wasn't a matter of negotiating price. It was a matter of finding somebody that had such a value and could, could embrace owning that land. And, and it'll be fun one day when you guys go back to your, near your hometown and ride by there. And I bet you it's exactly a, the way that guy describes it. Right. I, I would, would you agree, Greg? I, I definitely think so. I look forward to it. Yeah. Uh, it's, so let's look at this bad boy here because I love your deal. You guys made 30,000 at the closing. Right. And you invested 30,000. So you had an investment in it. Let's just say you broke even the first year. I'm going to, I'm going to say, okay, guys, that's just a break even. So the first year you made 11,500 bucks, right. In debt service where he's paying you. And now you got that money coming back for a long time. And that thing makes, 11,000, essentially 500 bucks a year for 20 years. And let me just tell you something. I had an old land man that used to say this saying to me, guys, I don't know that I've ever said this to you. That land will be very good to you. Yeah. Right. You said and it about the bank. I've, I've listened to you. If you're good to your bank, your bank will be good to you. Uh, yeah. And and of course, you guys have gotten very skilled at this. You now have a note, you have a business. You may want to, you may want to borrow some money against the note. You want to may sell a partial. There's lots of things you can do to recoup your future in money that's coming into you. If you need some of that money for working money up front to go do something with and not necessarily have to take, get clobbered and go sell the whole note and take it, even have to discount it really even. Right. So there's lots of there's lots of things in that in the future. So here's here's what I really appreciate about you guys. Um, you just looked at the house buying business and you've been in that business, right? That's how we kind of started. We, yeah. Yeah. Then you looked at it and you looked through a sort of sort of another set of lands and you said, look, we, we think we'd like to do this land business. And the one thing about it is, is you thought outside the box. Greg, I tease you all the time. Or, or, I'm sorry, sorry, Ben. I tease Greg. I tease Ben because he is a, Ben is a real weatherman. Am I right? <laughs> I am. That's what I wanted to do my whole life. Graduated from Penn State with my my degree in meteorology and was doing moved TV. To, moved to the radio, the TV station in Lafayette, Louisiana, and became the weatherman. And all of a sudden. That's a very part-time gig for you because full-time gig is you and Greg are in the land business, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. I'll, I'll let yeah. him sneak on live TV every now and then. <laughs> I, I know he sends me some video. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's been a while since COVID. They've they've kind of shut that down. I probably I get to I get to do it for probably fifteen times a year. Get to fill in, so it's fun. Anyway, it's uh that that's a that's a that's a fun that's a fun thing and. Uh, listen, guys, I really appreciate your business. I appreciate how you handle it. And uh, we'll all agree that was an extraordinary deal. We wish we could do that times 100 every year, but but sometimes they're not going to be quite have that wide of a margin in it. Yeah, we look for singles and doubles. I mean, that's really what we built our business on, you know, really good quality land. You know, this one is a home run. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Um, but we've learned a lot and, and look forward to continuing to learn a lot. Well, we appreciate you guys coming on and sharing and uh, a great story. And, and obviously we see seller financing on all kinds of asset classes. And as you, as you guys know, and we've talked about, you know, with this, with the, with the virus and commercial property and a lot of different asset classes that are going to be affected by, you know, going to become distressed assets and the, and the financing is going to dry up a good bit on some of that stuff. We're going to see seller financing on a heck of a lot more than houses. And that was obviously Joe's opener today, right? Can you do it on more than houses? Oh yeah. 
I think that that's going to be the theme really for the next, for a while. You got it. Yep. You guys, thank you. I'm so glad to see you and congratulations on your deal. Thanks, Eddie. Good to see you.